Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I've received a box. Now why does the box look all torn up? Well, the uh, normally when I unbox things, I like to do like the unboxing. The problem, however, was that the paper and the packaging and all the tape and everything was all like intertwined in this weird net. So I had to rip it all off so I got my address which is apparently like plastered all over this thing. So um, we had to do that. I have not actually looked inside of it yet. This is a sample all the way from Sweden. Now I've tested it and you'll see it doesn't really show very much in the Geiger counter. Supposedly there's some uranium, uh, some, some, I was almost said radi radioactive in uranium, so I almost said uranioactive. I am hereby coining the term uranioactive. There is uranioactive material in here, so this probably should be radioactive in a uranium sample. This is a very, very small, like, weak, like, rock sample. It's perfectly le legit to send the thing. It would do custom and everything. Not a problem. All right, so let's see. Here we go. What is this? Well, that doesn't look super duper Swedish. It looks like packaging from responsible sources. Well, that's no good. Responsible sources aren't fun. Let's see what's inside of this thing. All right, so... Bubble wrap. Are you like a bubble wrap person? What is this? <gasps> a card! Now let's look at the back of the card. It says stuff. Well, I can't tell you, uh, show you what it says because obviously that would like give it away. Neat though, huh? That's a nifty little card to come with the sample. Yeah, I know this isn't, you, you wanted to see radioactive stuff and you're like, it's a card. Well, I like it, so deal with it. All right, let's move it out of the way. Let's see, what is this? Oops, I just hit the camera. What is hitting the camera? All right, so <clears throat> let's move this out of the way here. Er, open, 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 open. Now I'm using bare hands, but this isn't like high grade. This is just a rock sample. So like it should be fine and I can wash my hands afterwards. Ooh, look at that. Now, I wonder what's making this guy tick if it does at all. It could be potassium. Whenever I see rocks that are this color, I immediately think potassium. It's a little bit radioactive. I've gotten rock samples like this from around the world, of course. This isn't enough radio, radio, uh, like radiation coming off this. It isn't like active enough to count as an ore sample anyway. We'll take it out in a minute and we'll see like what its actual readings are when it's out of the package. So look at that. Is you, I don't know if you can see this very carefully. Normally I don't like to move the camera around when I'm doing these because I get it all like set up initially. But hold on a second. Actually, I want you to see this. Give me a second. Let me... Can you see that? These little black things are crystals, I believe. We'll pull it out and put it on white paper so we can get a good view of what it looks like. Alright, so, we'll put that down. Neat. What's this? It's paper on my hands. What's this guy right here? What's this? What the hell? Some kind of... Maybe rock sample or metal sample or something? It's not radioactive. The note probably explains what it is. Yep, this right here is not radioactive. It's neat, whatever the hell it is. I'll figure it out, but it's not radioactive. All right, anything else in here? We just packing material, just packing material. All right, so. We have a rock. And like I said, normally I don't suggest handling things like with your bare hands, but in this case, I don't think that's going to be too much of, pro of a problem because this isn't particularly that radioactive. It's slightly radioactive. Let's see what the scintillator says. So we're in times 10 mode. So everything you see here is displayed in, in, in times 10. So uh, 0, 1,000, 2, 3, 4, 5,000 counts per minute. Cut on the sound. Three thousand, come on, three thousand counts per minute. It's the black that's radioactive. 
almost 3,000 counts per minute. Now let's try it on the Geiger counter. Get it really close to that touching. So we get all that alpha. Nope, works best when you hold it like this. All right, so it looks like we're getting a little over 700 counts per minute, more or less. Sorry to have the Geiger counter sideways, but my hand can't like turn because the tripod leg is right here. See, tripod. So almost 700, a little over 700 counts per minute. A good portion of that's alpha. So that does sound like uranium, but there's only one way to be sure, right? Gamma spectroscopy. We will sense what this is using gamma spectroscopy. I wonder what this could possibly be. A Swedish rock. Is it Swedish uranium? We will show, find out. Oh, but anyhow, thank you again for sending me... Hold on a second, let me stop and see what this thing is. Wow. I'm glad I took a second to look and see. See, I hadn't actually opened the package at all yet. Like, this is a legitimate unboxing, which means that I, as a disadvantage, didn't see this card until I looked inside of it. Um, I read the card, which has personal information in the back, which is why I didn't flip it over. But anyhow, now I know what this is. This is a lump of, of bismuth. Thank you, Mons. Thank you for the... Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, Taksumitke? Taksumitke? Did I say that right? Okay, Taksumitke? Yeah. Am I Swedish correct? I, I, pay, I didn't just like look that up in the translator, by the way, too. I learned Swedish, like a little tiny itty bitty bit of Swedish long ago. And then I went to Sweden, too, which was kind of interesting. So, Taksimike, if I said it right. And if I didn't, oops. Um, yeah, my defense is I'm in America, okay? That's, that's a reasonable defense. That's why I can't speak anything else. So, this is bismuth. Now, that is freaking awesome. All bismuth is technically radioactive in the tiniest little bit, uh, but not enough to pick up. So I'm used to dealing with bismuth 214 and 212. This is actually stable bismuth. So we'll figure out something to do. You know what? X-ray emissions fluoroscopy. This could be useful for X-ray emissions fluoroscopy as a sample of bismuth. We will use X-ray emissions fluoroscopy to see if we can identify this as bismuth. So we'll try that too. And we're also going to test this guy with gamma spectroscopy. So let's go do that now and figure out what makes this thing tick. And I'm telling you that that looks right there like feldspar. And this looks like feldspar, and this looks like maybe hornblende or biotite mica. I think it's biotite mica. I can't remember muscovite or biotite. The one that's black, I think it's biotite. And wherever you find these two, you typically find inclusions of where the two run together. You typically find um, inclusions of uh, uranium-bearing minerals, like uranium itself. Um, so that could be inside of this too, because where these two intersect is where I'm getting the radiation from. I don't think it's these crystals themselves. If these were like uranium oxide crystals, we'd be getting a hell of a lot more than 700 counts per minute off of them. So that's what I think we have here. So this came from his summer cottage, his family's summer cottage in Sweden. Sweden, which is not called Sweden in fear in Sweden, but that's okay. In America, we call it Sweden because we have like a different name for every country. Isn't that cool? But there you go. All right, so let's put it under the scope. As usual, you have an x by y graph, where x is the energy, and y is how much of it we found. So x, you have a uh, low energy, 3.52 kilo electron volts, kilo electron volts, and that goes all the way up to 2,228 kilo electron volts, or if you like, 2.228 uh, MeV. So basically put, the energy is going up as it goes to the uh, right. Each one of these 1,024 channels is represented here and counts how many detections per each individual channel did we find. This produces a fingerprint, of course, of the sample. Here's the sample. <clears throat> now, if you're familiar with gamma spectroscopy and do this a little bit, you'll immediately notice like this peak right here, for example, and this peak right here, and the double peak right here. This is thorium. That's right. This is not a uranium sample. This is a thorium sample. And we can be pretty sure of it, too. So, lead uh, to 10 is uh, right here. And mm, it's hard to say if that's lead to 10 or not. I have it uh, listed as lead to 10. Lead to 10 is usually found with uranium. 
So I found that odd. Um, I think there's a lead that's found with thorium, and I think I might have misidentified that. But it could also be 210 as well. It does appear pretty commonly. And there could be some uranium mixed in this rock. Um, and it could also be from the lead uh, in the actual testing chamber. Next up here, we have lead 212. This is a huge peak of lead 212 at 77.11 kV. This is also the shielding that we have around the actual detector itself. The, the, the gamma rays and uh, alphas and beta particles that are hitting that, that, that shield actually cause x-rays to fluoresce off of the lead. That fills up this set of channels right here. So that's actually a mixture of all of these things put together. We have thorium-228, and we have lead-212, and actinium-228, thallium-208, thallium-208. Here's, here's the big guy right here, the 583.19 keV peak at, at th uh, for thallium. This can be misidentified as uh, uh, bismuth-214 at 609 keV that you find in lead if you're not careful. Actinium. Some of these guys here were more visible to me in logarithmic view. Um, these peaks are strong enough I didn't have to use any statistical methods to derive whether they were there or not, like I would normally if I were looking at trace samples. This stuff was pretty easy just to pick out and identify, like for example, potassium-40. This is so weak that I really don't think it came out of the rock. <clears throat> it's about the same as background, so most likely this potassium came from me and other sources around me. There's a significant amount of potassium in each human body, and of course potassium is slightly radioactive. So, what we have here is an absolutely obvious textbook on the dot thorium sample. Thor! We have thorium sample from Sweden. Anyhow, there you go.